expand upon the dual responsibility of fatigue management? In managing fatigue, both the employee and the employer has important roles to play. And that's commonly referred to, as you say, as the dual responsibility of fatigue management. In a nutshell, it goes like this. The employer is responsible for uh, maintaining a safe workplace. For fatigue, this means ensuring that rosters and rostering practices, both formal and informal rostering practices like shift swapping, don't contribute to excessive or dangerous levels of fatigue. So the employer needs to manage the hours of work to ensure that they're not contributing to excessive fatigue. The flip side of the coin is the individual, the employee. They need to use their time away from work to get adequate amounts of sleep so that they can come to shift the next day having been recharged and not in a, an incredibly fatigued state because they've been out at a function somewhere or something else has come up and they haven't been able to get enough sleep before um, coming to work. So it's the individual's responsibility to, to look after sleep. It's the employer's responsibility to make sure that the rostering practices allow enough time for enough sleep. And it's not just sleep. You've got to put commuting in there. <laughs> You've got to put, you know, winding down, eating, washing. Those domestic duties take up time. And on top of that, you've got to have enough time for sleep before returning to, to shift the next day. In your opinion, could more be done by employers to manage fatigue? I've worked in a wide variety of sectors around Australia and my thoughts and feelings around the healthcare sector is that it comes from a culture and a history of doing everything for the patient, looking after the patient, providing the utmost care, the best care for the patient. And that's fantastic. I think the risk of that though is that we can tend to let our own personal safety slip a bit. And my own view is when it comes to fatigue management, I think the healthcare sector suffers from this a bit and that they could do more um, at a systems level and at an organisation level to have systems that manage fatigue in a systematic way rather than just perhaps letting groups sort it out for themselves or, or work it out for themselves. So there's no way I'm advocating against the, the work ethic in, in nursing, but it always needs to be balanced. And I love that example of the airline safety um, speech that when the oxygen masks drop down, always put your own on first before trying to put your children's masks on. And I think in a similar way, this applies to fatigue management in healthcare settings. If we're not um, able to perform our duties in an effective manner, then potentially we could make some pretty serious errors and uh, put patients in harm's way because of fatigue. And I think this is something that healthcare organisations need to address in a consultative way and in a systematic way with a long-term view for improvement rather than something for which there's a silver bullet or a quick fix because there's no silver bullets and quick fixes for fatigue. You've got to get people on board, individuals and the organisation and you've got to move forward together. Mm -hmm.